Hey everyone, welcome back to Quick Tech Tutorials. Uh, it's been a while since we've posted a video, but we're happy to say that we have plenty of new and exciting content coming out in 2024. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to be uh, notified of any new content that we post. Uh, in the spirit of the holiday season, I figured we'd get back into things with playing around with some red and green LEDs, and specifically, we're gonna activate them using a push button. So before we get started, let's take a look at our material list and see exactly what we need for today's project. All right, you're gonna need obviously an Arduino board uh, and a breadboard, uh, a USB cable and the Arduino software to upload your sketch. We'll need one push button, one red LED, a green LED, two 220 ohm resistors, one 10,000 ohm resistor, and some male to male jumper wires. That's all that's needed for today's circuit. All right, so we're gonna go ahead first and we're gonna take a look at what uh, a push button is, how it functions, we'll build a circuit, and then we'll get into creating the sketch. All right, so I've gone ahead and I placed my push button switch on top of my breadboard. So we're gonna take a closer look at it and you can see that there are two pins on one side and two pins on the other side and it conveniently fits perfectly on a breadboard to go right over the gap in the middle. Now, the way these pins are connected is these two pins on this side are connected to each other, and then the two pins on the other side are connected to each other, and the way you connect the right side to the left side is by pushing and holding down the button. All right, so uh, you could work on just this side of the switch, you could work on just this side of the switch, you could work on both sides of the switch, but it's a pretty easy uh, function here. All right, the four pins total, you have uh, one side connected uh, to the other side when the button is pushed down. All right, so I've placed that on my breadboard and building this circuit, right, first thing I'm gonna do is I need to connect power uh, and ground to my breadboard. So we're gonna connect it using the five volt uh, port on here as well as the ground ports and we're gonna connect it right to our power rail here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and install the uh, button uh, the wires, the resistors, the LEDs. We're gonna speed this up a little bit and uh, I'll explain my circuit once it's all done. All right, so my circuit is completed and I'm just gonna break down how this gets wired up. So I have my uh, my 5 volt and my ground connected to the power rail on my breadboard. All right, so now this entire power rail on my left hand side uh, is connected both positive and ground. First thing I did was wire up my switch, and we have power going to the switch. All right, and then on the other side, we have it connected to pin two because we're going to use this switch as an input device. So uh, we have to connect it to a pin. And in this case, we're just connecting it to pin two. You'll notice that I also have this resistor in here that's connected to ground, and that's called a pull-down resistor. And we're gonna connect it to ground so that when the switch is open or not being pressed, it reads low or off. If you don't have that resistor in there, it could actually throw off uh, the reading of the switch and you could get you know, a faulty uh, uh, notification that the switch is on. So we have a pull-down resistor in there. Um, to help it uh, read low when the switch is open. All right, so that's it on the switch. Going to the other side of the board, I know it's a little congested here, but we're using pins nine and 10. All right, and I try and color code things when I can. So I have a red wire coming out of pin nine, right? And it's connected to the anode of my LED, which is the longer lead. And then from the cathode, we have it connected to the 220 ohm resistor, and that goes to ground. It is the same thing for the green LED. Let's push that up a little bit. So we have a wire coming out of pin 10, going to the anode of the green LED, and then the cathode is connected to a resistor and that goes back to ground. All right, so this is all that's needed to build this circuit, nothing too crazy or complicated. Now let's get into writing the sketch. All right, so now that our circuit is completed, 
It's time to write the sketch. And the first thing we're going to do is create a variable. And it's gonna just provide a name in the Ar Arduino memory so it can keep track of what we're doing. All right, so the variable we're going to use is called switch state. Now, in addition to that, we also have to determine the type of variable it is. In this case, we're gonna use uh, int, which is short for integer, which just holds a whole number. All right, so this is actually gonna go before void setup. So I've moved it down a little bit. And the first thing we're gonna write is int switch state. And we're gonna say that it is zero. All right, so when you're using a switch, um, you know, it could be determined as high or low, high being on, low being off, but you could also use zeros and ones. In this case, zero being uh, low or off, and one would be high or on. All right, so we're just gonna determine the initial state of the switch right now is zero or off. All right, we're gonna now move down to our void setup. So I'm gonna get rid of just the text in here. And in here, we have to determine what the three pins are going to do. What is their function? So we're gonna write pin mode. And then in parentheses, uh, we're using pin two for my switch. That's gonna be an input device. And then pins nine and 10 that are connected to my LEDs, they're gonna be output devices. So same thing we just did above, but instead of writing input, you're gonna write output. There we go. And one more time, pin mode, 10 output, excellent. So we have that. Our void setup is now complete, it's pretty easy. Right? Pin two is gonna be an input, pin nine and 10 are going to be outputs. Now let's get into our void loop section. So this is the part of the code that's going to run repeatedly. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, tell switch state what to do. So we're gonna write switch state is equal to digital read. And what is it trying to read? Pin two. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna check the voltage level on the digital input, specifically on pin two. So it's trying to see if there's voltage running across there or if it's not. Now, uh, because we have a switch state here, we need to pretty much define two different scenarios here. And to do this, we're gonna use an if else statement. So right under here, we're gonna write if, and in parentheses, we're gonna write switch state with two equal signs is low and we're going to open a bracket and hit enter right we have to write what's going to happen if the switch is off or low now i'm using two equal signs here because this is going to determine if something is true or false right it's going to compare something so if you use one equal sign it's just declaring that that's what it is if you use two equal signs uh it's used to compare something so if the switch state is low What's gonna happen? In this case, I want both of my LEDs to be off. So we're gonna write digital right, and then nine low, and then same thing for pin 10. Digital right, 10 low. And that all goes right within those two brackets. After this bracket, I'm now gonna write else. And I'm gonna open up another bracket and hit enter. And now it's saying, okay, pretty much else is saying if the switch is high. So I don't need to write switch state equals high um, because if we wrote, if it's low, this is what happens. Else is comparing now and saying, okay, if it's not low, what is it going to do? In this case, I want my red and green LED to alternate lighting up back and forth. All right. Um, We'll just say for, for this practice, we're gonna make it uh, illuminate every half a second. All right, so I'm gonna write digital right once again, pin nine, and we'll say that that's high now. All right, and I'll do the same thing for pin 10, except I'm gonna make it low because I still want that off. 
And now I have to say, well, how long do I want pin nine? Right, my red LED, how long do I want that on for? We want it on for a half a second. So we write that out as delay. And the time is in milliseconds. So a half a second is gonna be 500 milliseconds. So we'll write delay 500. And if I'm just gonna alternate, I'm gonna copy this. And let's just go under here, I'll paste it. And I'm just gonna change pin nine to low now and pin 10 to high. And again, that's for a half a second. Now, there's a couple things you could do here, right? This is just going to, when I press the button, the red's gonna blink for a half a second, turn off, the green's gonna blink for a half a second, turn off, and that's it. Cause I've only told it to blink once and then that's it. It's then gonna go back to my initial if, if I only just pressed the button once and let go of it. Uh, if you wanted this to repeat several times, you could copy and paste this, but that's a lot of work. What we can also throw in here is a for loop. So after else, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna write for, and then in parentheses, uh, in our for loop, we have to determine what is the starting point, what is the end point, and how many times do you want it to count by. So I'm gonna write uh, int, and then i is equal to zero. Pretty much this is, we're starting off counting at zero. Uh, we're gonna say i, let's say I want this to go 10 times. i is less than 10. And then the final is i plus plus. And what that plus plus is saying is uh, it's starting at zero, it's gonna go up to 10, and it's gonna count by ones. All right, so this is a little for loop in here. And now, let's just check here. I think I need one more open bracket and one more closed bracket down at the bottom. This is my whole sketch. All right, so we've determined that the switch is in a low state to start off. I have my pin two as my input, pin nine and 10 as my outputs. Uh, in my loop section, right, it's going to read the voltage across pin two, which is my switch state. Uh, if switch state is low or off, both LEDs are off. And then when we press the button and voltage runs across, we turn the switch on, we have the red LED is going to go on for a half a second, and then the green LED is going to go on for a half a second. And because we threw this little for loop in here, it should blink back and forth 10 times. All right, before we upload the sketch, always important to verify and make sure it's good. So let's click verify. All right, it says we got a little issue in here. Expected a semicolon. So let's see, I probably missed a semicolon somewhere, which is very important. Oops, there we go. There it is right there. I have a comma instead of a semicolon. So I'm kind of glad I had an error here. So this is always important to see that, you know, things don't always work perfect the first time around, but it's good to see mistakes as well. And sometimes it's as simple as that. Let's verify again. Uh, let's see. We got an extra close bracket in there. There we go. All right. So. That last error, by the way, for every open bracket you have, you must also have a closed bracket. So it looks like I had an extra one in there when I created the uh, this open bracket up here. So everything looks good now. Now it's time to upload our sketch to the Arduino board and let's see if we were successful with our uh, sketch and our and building of the circuit. All right, so we uploaded the sketch, everything is done. And now here's the exciting part. Let's test it out. So if we did this correctly right, right now, uh, my board is on, it's plugged in, I uploaded my sketch, and so far things look good. My button is not being pressed, so the switch is in a low state, which means both of my LEDs are off. So this looks good. Let's push the button, and if we did it correctly, we should see the red and green blink back and forth in half second intervals for a total of 10 times. So here we go. Awesome. And again, right, because the button isn't continuously being pressed, once that cycle is done, it goes back to my if statement, switch is low, LEDs are off. And I could pretty much press this again and again, 
to have them turn on. Now, this is pretty much it, but from this knowledge and from this video, you could do so much with just the push button and the if else statement. I could add more LEDs, I could have these fade, I could have uh, it attached to a speaker, I could have it attached to an LCD screen. There's so many things you can do. So take this knowledge with you, play around, practice this, and see what fun stuff you can come up with. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you like what you see, help support the channel, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and also follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks for watching.